Welcome to the T-Bird Zone, streamed every week on SUTBirds.com and SUUNews.com. We're in studio with head football coach Ed Lamb, and we're previewing the upcoming game with the South Dakota Coyotes. Uh, so, Coach, coming off, again, that loss against North Dakota, right back into conference play with the University of South Dakota. Uh, a lot of storylines uh, going into that game. USD, it's their conference opener. Um, it's a chance for Southern Utah to get back on track um, in the conference uh, championship race and uh, something that you brought up at the coaches luncheon yesterday that Southern Utah has yet to beat a team from South Dakota in the state of South Dakota. Um, what excites you the most going into this game? You know it's a it's a big game for a lot of reasons but every game has always been the biggest game of the season. Um, the next game is always the biggest game of the season. So last week, as we sat here and previewed North Dakota, that was the biggest game of the season. And, and this is this week. Um, you know, specific to South Dakota, you mentioned some things, some kind of some side storylines that are probably more along the lines of, of the way a fan would view things. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, for us, we have a, a very, very good football team. South Dakota always, uh, already has knocked off the number one team in the country at their dome. They have an incredible win-loss record at their dome. Um, over the over the years since they've gone Division One and even in back in other Division Two days, they're very 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 well coached. They're one of the biggest, most physical teams in the country, and for us, that's a that's a matchup that we usually have an advantage in. Usually, we're more physical than our opponents, so it will definitely be a, a three-hour arm wrestling match, and that's something that we really enjoy the challenge of. Uh, what's the if both teams then have that that strength? What's the key matchup then on the field on Saturday? The key matchup will be who can run the ball and who can who can stop the run. And uh, it, with those things, usually we're talking about e efficiency, running it effectively, not necessarily who runs it the most times or who runs it for the most yards. We, you know, we, of course, those are goals to aspire to. But the team that can run it efficiently and effectively, and uh, sprinkle the run in there, sprinkle the pass in there, and stay ahead of the chains and get first downs consistently, that's the team that's going to win. And you talk about the running game, and last year uh, in Cedar City. Southern Utah beats USD 31 to 13, behind really really strong rushing performances by Austin Minifee. He had 141 yards rushing. Decker Alexander averaged over 10 yards per carry. Um, what what does this do for the backfield going into the game, knowing that they've had this success in, against South Dakota in the past? It's all about this game's been all about the run game since in the history of the SUU South Dakota matchup. We have um, our uh, Two, let's see, three seasons ago, my first year here, South Dakota ran all over us. And then two seasons ago, they did it as well. Two years in a row, they, they rushed for well over 200 yards, maybe even over 300 yards against us, I can't remember. And uh, last year, we went into the game knowing that we had to establish the running game. And I thought we beat them in that area, and we won the game. So the, if, if history is any lesson of this week to come, we definitely are going to have to run the ball really well, and we're going to have to stop them from running the ball. Um, has there been a specific weakness that you've seen or something that you plan to exploit as you've watched film against uh, USD? Well, certainly nothing that I'd want to put out there on the internet the week <laughs> of the game. <laughs> no, we, you know, South Dakota, all the teams on our schedule are, are very good teams. I mean, they're just, they're well coached. These guys are experienced coaches and, and experienced players, and they're, they're very good players. So, you know, that's kind of, um, you know, that's maybe more of a fantasy football mentality to think that, we can go in there and expose somebody because they do something unsound. We have to go in and we have to play the same offense and defense that we always do, and they're going to play the same offense defense that they always do, and the better team's going to win, the team that's more prepared and more motivated. You talked about uh, South Dakota's win over Eastern Washington, the defending national champion, and the final score in that game, 30-17, to 17, in the second week of the season there in Vermilion. Um, but really, South Dakota, they have a 3-2 and two record, They've lost games that they should have lost um, at the Air Force Academy um, against the University of Wisconsin, and then beat teams that they should have beat in NAIA school, Northwestern Oklahoma State, and then a Division II school in Lindenwood. Um, it's, it's very similar to our discussion last week when we were previewing North Dakota, where North Dakota had lost to the teams they were supposed to lose to, beat the teams. Um, does that worry you going into the game as far as the same schedules that those two teams have played and it's difficult to really pull together a, a scattering report for those teams? 
I would say it was more difficult last week with, with North Dakota. We weren't quite sure what kind of team they were going to be, and I don't think they knew what type of potential they had. They, I'm sure they had hopes, but they, you know, they had beat some, some lower-level teams and lost to some upper-level teams. But make no mistake about it, South Dakota has been tested at our level against one of the best in, in Eastern Washington University, and they didn't just come out on top. They won going away. And uh, that was just a, a three and a half hour long celebration, South Dakota over Eastern Washington. Eastern Washington was never really in the game from the start. And, uh, and the only time that we've played there, it was the same story. We were never in the game. Two years ago, we had a chance to win a conference championship. We would, we would be defending two conference championships if we would have won at South Dakota two years ago. So our players definitely know what they're getting into. Their team knows what they're all about. There's no question marks here. Um, our schedule this year, tough top to bottom, um, particularly in that uh, the team is playing a lot of games on the road. I know you don't have too much uh, as far as the schedule planning goes, mm -hmm. um, but is this the type of schedule that uh, you aspire to, or would you like to have one or two of those D2s in NAIA schools? I don't, I don't want to say pad stats, but you know, those games that you're supposed to win, would you want those on the schedule? No, I, I think our players really are rising to the challenge of playing a, a full Division One schedule. It's the first time in SUU's history that we are. I think our program is ready at this point. Um, every game on our schedule is a game that we can win, and every team on our schedule, every opponent, is an opponent that has the ability to beat us if we don't play well. And we like that challenge. Um, no question about it, we'd like to have a couple of more home games, but... Um, but make no mistake, we, we have to win more consistently and attract more fans. You made the, the mention about the community being excited after our win over UNLV, and yet we come back and have one of the lowest attendances in America. So we, we have to earn that community excitement on a consistent basis, earn those seats in the stands. And when we get consistent crowds, we'll be able to get more home games because we know that we can offer a guarantee. Excellent. Well, as always, appreciate you coming in. Game time on Saturday in Vermilion, 3 o'clock Mountain Time. Uh, but you can listen to that game live on uh, the flagship for Thunderbird Athletics on Power 91, 91.1 FM. And join Coach Lamb on Wednesday night at Sunny Boys Barbecue for the Sunny Boys Coaches Show. That can also be heard on Power 91. And again, and again that time starts at 7 o'clock. And as always, again, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.